There are two challenges in dealing with the 10% reservations immediately. One is legal, the other is the qualifying criteria that the government has come up with. Legal challenge is going to be mounted, already some parties have mounted the challenge. There are again two legal challenges. One is, is this constitutional amendment in consensus with the basic structure of the constitution? After the case one of the party judgment, even if the parliament acts as a constituent assembly and amends the constitution in article 368, even that constitutional amendment must stand the scrutiny of law. We'll have to wait and see whether the Supreme Court will hold that this is permissible within the basic structure of the constitution or not. But the second bigger challenge is the 50% cap on reservations Supreme Court has repeatedly reiterated. The court's logic is that equality of treatment for education or employment is the norm. That is what the fundamental rights are about. Reservation is an exception to meet with a special situation. The exception cannot become so big that the norm is completely given up. And therefore they said under no circumstances should it cross 50%. It should be a minority. In any case, not more than 50%. It's going to be very hard to overcome that legal challenge. This 8 lakh rupees annual income of the family is too high. In India, most economists and statisticians say that more than 90% of the families have under 8 lakh rupees annual income. Now, when you give reservation to everybody, it's actually reservation to nobody. So that doesn't make sense. I think a more reasonable cap for, for family is required. My own sense is, that if you take the child or the young person who is seeking employment, her educational background, which school she went to, if she went to a government school or a very low-end private school, 300, 400 rupees per month kind of thing, in my judgment, that is a sure shot of determining genuine poverty and genuine discrimination or lack of opportunity in education. I think it's better to go for such criteria rather than a income cap because in India there is so much of laxity and corruption that in many states 90% or more families are eligible for subsidized rice. So once these challenges are overcome we can then see how to implement it. For some time reservations will have to continue there is no choice because there is genuine backwardness and deprivation. But the problem is the way it's implemented is leading to enormous strife. If a person who does not get reservation or a person who genuinely feels poor but in reserved communities but doesn't get quality education at school level, when she sees a, an IAS officer's child or a minister's son getting the benefit of reservation, it's very painful. There's a lot of heartburn out there. The Supreme Court held that in case of backward classes, there must be creamy layer implemented. But it's being done very half-heartedly. There must be clear and definitive criteria for all reservations, SC, ST, BC. If the parents reach a certain level, let's say somebody is a doctor, somebody is an officer in government, somebody is a politician above a certain rank, let's say an MLA or MP or in a big city, a corporator, etc. To then continue to include them in reservations is absurd. Because the logic of reservations is that once you get a certain financial ability to take care of yourself, you will come out of discrimination. Now, if an IAS officer's son is not coming out of the discrimination, then when are you going to come out of it? If a minister's daughter is not coming out of discrimination, then when are you going to come out of it? Therefore, we must very firmly exclude certain sections because then the benefits will flow to the truly poor among the reserved communities. If an SC seat is available to the poor instead of the rich among SCs, 
or a BCC. It is available to the poor among BCs instead of the rich among BCs. The beneficiaries are the SCs and BCs respectively. But this is not enough. The real challenge is our school education is appallingly bad. It is disgracefully bad. In a survey conducted between 14 and 18 years of age in Telangana the other day in a whole district, 50% of the kids between 14 and 18 cannot look at a watch and read time. They cannot tell you the time in hours and minutes. 50%. 30% of children in almost all states of India, 25 to 30% in 8th class, cannot read a simple passage. About 40% of children in 8th class, 40% cannot do a simple subtraction, two-digit subtraction, let alone learning when to do it. I'm not even talking about applying the concept. I'm simply talking of doing the mechanical operation. About 60% of children in 8th class cannot divide a three-digit number. These are appalling statistics across the country. Most of the poor, SC, ST, BC, other segments, poor, are getting this kind of so-called education. Either in most of the ram ramshackle government schools, some government schools are good, but most are really ineffective, or the low-end private schools, there is a pretense that we are giving education. Now, once you have destroyed the foundations, what's the point of trying to build a wall and a, and a roof? That's what reservations are about. Reservations in higher education is a wall and a foundation that does not exist. And reservation in jobs, government jobs, is a roof on a foundation and a wall that do not exist. So the whole thing is farcical ultimately. Quality school education must be the central theme. That every kid, irrespective of the caste and parental income or education, will get 10 12 years of quality education comparable to as good as any other country. Once that happens, then reservations will have advantage. Once that happens, irrespective of reservations, the children have a future. There is an opportunity for vertical mobility. Right now, we don't have it. So, much of the reservation debate is a fraudulent debate because we are completely excluding the poor in the country from education itself even when they are going to schools and finally reservation in jobs is about government jobs more than 90 percent of the workers in india are in the unorganized sector they don't have a monthly regular wage they are not on payrolls out of the eight to ten percent in the organized sector more than half are in government And in general, employees and government are paid two to four times the wages in the private sector. For the same work, if somebody pays 10,000 rupees in private sector, in government typically we are paying 20 to 30, 40,000 rupees. And most of them, they, they have no incentive to work because nobody is measuring their work. There is no accountability. And we all know about the corruption in government. So by making reservations the central theme, we are basically saying government does not perform either in terms of quality school education or in terms of delivering the services that the people are entitled to get. And we will give some of you, the privileged ones, that position in government and therefore you can behave in the same manner. Dysfunctional, highly paid, overpaid, underperforming, and generally speaking, corrupt. What kind of a vision is this about the country? Unless we look at job creation and accountability in government so that the tax money is utilized properly and the people get the services they deserve, all this is a very fraudulent debate entirely aimed at elections. And that's why after 70 years, the people who get reservations, the deserving people, scheduled cars, scheduled ties, backward classes, most of them feel that they are cheated. Their lives are not better. Rationalizing reservation so that the truly poor get the benefits. And for the unreserved communities in the OCs, giving some kind of a weightage rather than quotas. Quotas may not stand judicial scrutiny. Suppose you give weightage on the basis of the school that the child goes to, 
and the parents' education. It's a greater guarantor that the deserving child gets the benefit. Give some weightage in terms of 3%, 5% marks or whatever. And quality school education, as I said. And finally, making the government work rather than making the government a tool of exploitation for the few privileged ones who are in government. In a way, the whole reservation debate shows how the issues debated are completely unrelated to the real issues that affect the people's lives. We are creating mythical issues, polarizing society, not improving lives and therefore India is held back and the poor people of India are held back and if the government does not perform, the people who actually suffer and pay the price are the poor, not the rich. The rich somehow manage. They buy their way into things, get things. They buy their services. They don't depend on government for most things. They have their own private education, private health care. It is the poor who are suffering. I think it's time that public discourse actually is focused on real issues affecting the poor in the country.